what you were expecting? What's up? A 4 3 8. Nah, I ain't gonna lie to you. I wasn't expecting a 4 3 8. <laughs> but I was, I was expecting like low 4 4, okay. but when I had seen a 4 3 8, I got pretty excited. Okay. It's kind of a fun day for you. Yes, sir. Uh, it was good to come back and see everybody. You know, I'm excited to see like trainers, coaches, uh, most importantly my teammates. So. But no place to do snow angels here. Nah, <laughs> nah, no, not today. What about the past few months, kind of? I mean, you're you're kind of one of the you, you are one of the big names in the draft. You're one of the top running backs. Just what's that whole process been like? I assume it's yeah. kind of a, probably a childhood dream. I mean, mm -hmm. it's about to happen for you. Yeah, here, but so, just being that high profile too. Right. Like yeah, that's been a dream of mine since a kid. But like. Um, you know, these past couple months, uh, it was pretty much a stay focused on what I had to do, you know, training, training every day. I was down in Pensacola, you know, uh, just enjoying the process day by day. Is it surreal at all? I mean, that this is all real and that you are? Yeah, it's crazy. You, are, I mean? you know, since a little kid, you dream about it. So, you know, it's an exciting time. When you were, when you were going through the recruiting process before the portal, how much did Bell sell you on the idea that this is the place? where you can make your NFL dreams come true. Yeah, um, he told me, um, you know, the time we talked, we talked for a little minute. And uh, we talked about, you know, how he's changing the program around and how he's seen me in the future and being a star back. So uh, that was important to me, and I felt like uh, that's what really got me. So that's why I'm here today. Do you think you, I mean, obviously you want to go as high as you can, but do you think you should be the number one back taken in the draft overall, regardless of where that, that fits? Uh, it's a lot of good backs, you know. Um, I would love to be taken the first, obviously, yeah. But, um, you know, wherever I'm taken, I'm going to make my opportunity count and go as hard as I can. How long, how, how, how much have you allowed yourself to kind of sit back and say, at some point soon, I'm going to be Kenneth Walker the third NFL running back? Right. Yeah, I have talks with some of my teammates. You know, me and Aunt Russo, the other day he was in the cold tub. We brought it up. It was like, you know, I brought it up. I'm like, you know, we work so hard, you know, but we forget, like, to have fun with it, you know. So just taking a step back and looking and then being like, just to have fun with it and chill and relax. So what? Recently, recently, it was recently. Oh, good. What kind of impact back do you think you can be at the next level? What kind of impact? What kind of an impact back do you yeah. think you can be at that level? I feel like I can be an all-around back, you know, third down, first down, you know, everything. I think I can do everything. So I think I can make a positive impact on the team. Is it a big deal to you how high you go, or is it just like you get your opportunity and then you try to prove yourself? Yeah, obviously, uh, it's it's a dream, like I said. I would love to go high. But, like, any any opportunity, whatever team picks me, uh, I'm going to do the best that, that I can do to continue to work hard and make that count. Yeah, it was it was smooth, you know. Uh, actually, a lot of questions, you know. But uh, it's been it's been fun, you know, meeting with different teams, you know, teams you watch on TV, like as a kid. But like being able to meet with those teams and talk to them about football, it's a fun experience. Really? Um, talked to a few. I talked to a few teams today. Some more than others. Uh, about the same. How has your relationship with Connor Hayward evolved over time since you've gotten here? Yeah, that's my dog. Even when I first got here, that's the first person I hung out with. So, like, he took me in, he took me around, you know, showed me East Lansing. Um, you know, he helped me with everything on and off the field, you know, when I got here. Obviously, I didn't know much about the offense. And he showed me, like, um, a lot of key points in the offense. Even when he went to tight end, he would always help me. So, it was, we got a close relationship. What can you say about a guy like him who has the humility? You know, he could have transferred somewhere as well, but he chose right. to stay here and take a backseat to your terrific season and then carve out his own beach. That just shows, that's a lot of guys here, like that just shows how they are, you know, so supportive. And um, that means a lot to me, how I have like teammates around me that, you know, don't want to see me fail, but, you know, want to see me do good. And uh, it's vice versa for them. We haven't really talked to you since your decision not to come back. With you. Looking back, was that a no-brainer for you? Uh, nah, I had to talk to, you know, my parents. I talked to my coaches, I talked to Jay Reed, Peyton, you know, I talked to my teammates and made sure that uh, that was, I was making the right decision. What what pushed you over the top? What, what turned you in that direction? Uh, pretty much after I talked to Coach Tuck and we finished our talk, uh, that's what pretty much got me. And I talked to my position coach, Coach Piegler. I talked to Coach Piegler when he was here and uh, Coach Reed. Was so, watching the Peach Bowl tough for you? Yeah, yeah, it was. You know, I watched that whole game. You know, I don't even watch football like that, really? to be honest. Yeah, so <laughs> I was I was glued to the TV. Where were you? Uh, I was here. I was at State. I was in my house over there. What were your feelings as you watched it? Oh, uh, you know, we was down early, so I don't know. 
I told my mom, I can go back on the text. I told my mom, we still gonna come back and win. And that's what they did. And you know, they pulled it out. Did you see any teammates when they got back? Or had you left before? You I, I left before. I, I went back to Memphis, spent some time with my family. Man, I went to training. Was it like training in Florida? It was smooth, you know, having somebody there that I knew. Like when I first got there, obviously I didn't know nobody. Um, actually, I had another teammate, Corey. Uh, he was at Wake Forest before, so like, knew him, Zach, and then uh, having Connor, Connor there, you know, that would be my workout partner, so it made it a lot easier. Have you two kind of talked about, you know, the fact that the NFL's around the corner, your career's about to start? Yep, yep, even today we talked about it, so yeah, we talk about it quite a bit. Where will you be on draft pay, Kat? Uh, I'll be at home. I'm going to be home with my parents. What was it like to see Mel Tucker again? Do you guys stay in contact and we saw face-to-face? It was the first time in how long? What was that like? Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, I had a w- couple of award ceremonies to go to. So, like, he was there. You know, he able to come, he was able to come to Doak Walker. So, it was great to see him, you know, have him fly all the way out there and make that sacrifice to come see me at my award ceremony. So, it meant a lot. I'm sorry to cut you off. Technically, you've been in Michigan State for a year. Mm-hmm. Does it feel like this is your... This is this is this will be your you know your your home yeah. so speak this is yeah. your program. How do you mm-hmm. feel about that? Yeah, I, I love coming back here, you know, being able to talk to everybody. You know, even being around a city like of uh, East Lansing, uh people so kind, you know, come up to me, talk to me, so it's great to be here. At any point in the last several months have you reflected on just coming here and what if you hadn't, you know, or if you had any other options? I mean, it seems like this worked out pretty well, but have you thought about, man, what if I made another choice back in last January? Yeah, um, I haven't too much thought about that as much, but I have thought about that before, like how different things would have been. But, like, you know, God has a plan for everybody, so I think that's his plan for me. But you can when you, got, though, here, when you well, got here that January, is this what you pictured? I mean, was this the best-case scenario? Was it better than that? I mean, did you think you'd be in and out in one year and going to the NFL? Was that uh, I couldn't say I, you know, I dreamed of it, but, you know, have it happen was so surreal to me, so it meant a lot. Michigan State obviously had a long draft pick streak, I mean, that ended last year. How, uh, they they had a streak of draft picks that I guess went back to, I think, 1939. Yeah, Yeah. and so it ended last year. How cool is it that you're going to be the person that, you know, starts a new streak? I mean, you're going to be the first person to take it. Yeah, I didn't even know about that, honestly. But uh, that's that's actually cool to be able to hear that. And, you know, my name is in that topic. So that's, that's actually cool to me. Do you have sort of just a, a last message for the fans and supporters? And probably just one of your last times being in front of us here. Uh, Yeah, I'll just say I appreciate them for everything they did, you know, supported the whole team and, like, uh, just taking me in, you know. Uh, I'm uh, forever grateful for that. Do you feel do you feel a sense of satisfaction also that you helped the program too? Satisfaction as in like you, you helped lift the program a little bit too, not just the team last year, but the right. program. You feel like that? Uh, thought about it that way? I haven't. I feel like you know it goes both ways. You know, um, you know they put me in a great position to be successful, and you know just having guys around me, uh, it made it much easier for me. You know, I get I seem to get a lot of the credit, but you know we got other guys on the field that's done amazing job as well and if it wasn't for them I wouldn't be in the position I am in today. Yeah we talked about it. You know we talked about it. You know he was still deciding at the time so you know I'm not gonna try to force him to go you feel me like we spoke on it and uh you know he came to his decision. I wasn't here at the time but I seen on social media and we text I talked text and talked to him about it but I saw Dion, it was, you're listed as Kenny Walker for no, everything at the combine. No. Was that by choice no. or is that just a no, clerical no, error? I don't know. I, okay, it's Kenneth Walker that they okay. always put Kenny. I don't, I don't even know where it came from. I just <laughs> want to make sure you didn't change your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the K9 nickname though? Or are you leaving yeah. that in college? Or are you going to try to keep doing that? Uh, you know, if you can wear nine at the next level? Yeah, if I could wear nine, I'll wear nine. You know, that's since a sophomore, you know, a guy named T. Foster. That was, uh, he was the other running back. He um, honestly made that nickname up for me. And then it just stuck. You had it at Wake before mm-hmm. you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah.